So that's a 1. Plus we'll have an i, x a t a plus i, x a prime t a. Um, we will have a 1 half, x a, x b, t a b. We will have a 1 half, x a prime, x b prime, t a b. And um, we would have a term coming from multiplying that with that, which would give us a minus x a, x b prime, t a, t b. Okay? And then plus, we would have the x cubed type term starting to appear. How many working to second order? What must this be equal to? So I've multiplied the two group elements. Well, I've said that that must be t evaluated at the f's, right? So now let me plug the f's in again to this expansion. So this should be equal to 1 plus i f a t a plus 1 half f a f b t a b. But I know what f is. Okay, we, we argued f has to take that form. So let me now plug in the expression for f. So this will be 1 plus i. I need an x a plus x a prime um, <coughs> plus c, let's say, a, b, c. Um, x b x c prime and that contracts into t a plus and now I'm only working to second order so I need to include the first order contributions to f a and f b so this is one half x a plus x a prime x b plus x b prime t a b okay so I've got a 1 plus i x a t a plus i x a <coughs> prime t a. Good. Those first three terms match those first three terms. Now I'm going to start picking up terms from here. I'm going to pick up the x a x b t a b. Good. That matches the next term. I'm going to pick up the term of the x primes. That also matches. And now let's look at the term with the x, x prime. Well, there's a couple of contributions. Here's one. We've got c, a, b, c, x, b, x, c prime, t, a, plus now we've got some terms coming from multiplying that with that and that with that. Now I already said TAB is symmetric, so I'm just going to multiply them in and add them. And you can check that what I will get is an XA, XB prime, TAB. The factor of one half over here gets cancelled because I've added two terms. Okay, good. In this term? Great. Okay, good. Ah, good. Okay. So I guess there should also be... Oh, oh right. Yeah, good point. Okay. Um, is that the only thing I missed so far? Okay, good. Okay. Plus order x cubed again. So you see, everything matches. That matches, that matches, that matches, that matches, that matches. But this has to now be equal to that. Okay? That's the condition. So let's write down. So, so I'm going to read that off now. You should be able to check that. I mean, I just did the same calculation in my notebook, so it should be the same thing. What we learn is the following. Minus TATB would be equal to um, TBA plus ITCEA. But we said that TBA has to be symmetric, okay? So what we have to require is, we have to require for consistency, 
that naught is equal to TAB minus TBA, okay? And what does this mean? Well, if you work out what this means, it means the following. So, so I, I, okay, TBA would be equal to what? It's minus TA, TB, minus ITE, CEAB. So you use this formula, you ask that that is zero, and this is the condition that you get. This implies that TA, TB is equal to I, F, A, B, C, T, C, and this F, A, B, F, A, B, E is equal to C, E, A, B, minus C, E, B, A. So let's just pause to see what we've done. We said, okay, let's start to focus on things at the level of group generators. There's only a finite number of those, and we'll get a better characterization of the group. We, now, previously we've been characterizing our group by its multiplication table. We wanted to figure out what do we replace the multiplication table by when we are focusing on generators. And we now have our answer. We have to require that the generators satisfy this relation. We call that the Lie algebra of the group. Okay, so this is called the Lie algebra. And these constants F, A, B, C, these are called the structure constants of the group. And modulo some subtleties that we will discuss. The structure constants form a fingerprint of the group, just like the multiplication table did. So you want to specify your Lie group? Specify the structure constants. Um, another comment, maybe. Why do we have this I sitting here in the algebra? Well, there is a reason for that. Um, so, so, so we've said that our generators, the TAs, are Hermitian, okay? So let's take a look at TATB. So if we look at this commutator, TATB, this is equal to TATB minus TB, TA. And let's take the dagger of that. When we dagger a string of operators, we need to reverse the order of the operators, and we need to dagger each operator, okay? Now, now, these guys dagger to themselves because they're Hermitian, which means we land up just swapping the order of them. So the first term becomes TBTA, and the second term becomes TATB. So this is just minus TATB. Okay, everyone happy with that? So this is anti-Hermitian. But I times by something that is Hermitian is anti-Hermitian. So that means if I include this I here, my structure constants will be real. That's why I included the I. Okay? So the I is in the Lie algebra, so the structure constants are real. Um, let me just check. Ah, oh, another important comment. So something may be worrying you. You might say, you know what, I don't find this convincing at all. And the reason why I don't find it convincing is you've worked things out to order x squared. And you drop the x cubed and all of that. Now, just to make the x squared terms agree, we had to impose this condition. What about if I went to x cubed? I mean, would those terms just agree automatically or would I get new conditions? Okay? So, so my challenge to you is check those terms. You should find that there are no new conditions that need to be satisfied. Once you've got the, the Lie algebra condition holding, you know that your group multiplication will be consistent. Okay, and now let's come back to one of the subtle points that I mentioned. We've been making an assumption. The assumption that we've been making is, if we exponentiate the, the generator, we'll be able to get any element of the group. Now, in certain situations, there are elements of the group that you cannot obtain by exponentiating the generator. So I want to give you an example of that, an example of generators of a group that could not be obtained, of, of, sorry, of group 
elements that could not be obtained by exponentiating a generator. Okay. And the example that I want to consider, <coughs> so it's called SO2, or, or O2, sorry. So we're going to look at the group O2. So what is the group O2? <coughs> it is, it's a matrix, well, it's isomorphic to the matrix, the, let's say, the group of two by two real orthogonal matrices. And what we mean by orthogonal matrices, we mean that if you calculate A transpose A, that is the same as A, A transpose, that just gives you the identity. Okay. So, so the, the first thing, if I tell you something like this, the first thing that you should check is the condition that we're imposing on our set of matrices, is that consistent with the closure axiom of the group? So what I mean by that is, let's say that I've got um, A1 transpose A1 is equal to the identity. And let's say that I've also got A2 transpose A2 is equal to the identity. That means that A1 and A2 will both belong to the set of matrices. The question now is, if we really have closure, does A1 times A2 belong to the set of matrices? Well, let's check that. So we take A1, A2 transpose times by A1, A2. Now, if I take the transpose of a string of matrices, what should I do? Reverse the order of the matrices and transpose each matrix. So this would now give me A2 transpose, A1 transpose, A1, um, A2. A1 transpose, A1 would just be the identity. So I'd land up with A2 transpose, A2, and that would also be the identity. Good. So if I start off with two matrices, which satisfy my condition of orthogonality, and I multiply them, I get a matrix which also satisfies my condition for orthogonality. So that's the most basic thing you could um, check. Now, we know the following. <coughs> we know that um, the determinant of a matrix A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of the matrix. So, uh, and we also know if we have got a product of matrices, the determinant is equal to the product of the determinants. So let's take a look at this condition over here. What is the determinant of the unit matrix? One, right? So what we learn is we learn that the debt of A squared is equal to one. So I've taken the determinant of this equation. And that tells me the determinant of A can be plus or minus one. In O2, I have some elements which have a determinant equal to plus 1 and some elements with a determinant equal to minus 1. Those elements with a determinant equal to plus 1 are just our normal rotations. But you see, there's another type of matrix that satisfies this condition. And that's not just a rotation. It's a rotation together with, you leave one of your axes the same and you flip the other one. So you've got some sort of um, um, parity um, transformation that you've performed. 